Hello, everybody. My name's Greg Brown, and I'm head of the product management group here at Nonshape. Thank you all for joining us today for this webinar, where we'll talk about the new frames toolset in Nonshape. I'm really happy to, to be joined today uh, by Joy, uh, Jay Tedeschi, one of the product managers for Onshape, and also a very special guest, Josh Nuth, who's in the R&D team for Part Studios. And he was the code you'll see today. So with that, I'll hand over to Jay and Josh, who will take you through today's seminar. Jay? Thanks, Greg. So uh, first, the agenda for today. Uh, we're going to discuss, uh, first of all, Onshape uh, as a product development platform. Uh, then we'll move along to uh, an overview of Frames itself. Uh, we'll discuss uh, some of the tools, the features, and a couple of demos uh, of it actually in use. Uh, and then Josh is going to discuss uh, what's next. What, where do we go from here with regards to uh, Frames? Um, of course, at any time during this presentation, uh, we're taking questions in the uh, in the GoToMeeting console itself, uh, and then at the end we'll open it up to uh, just a, a more general uh, Q and A. Okay, so on shape as a product development uh, platform. Um, as we continue to expand the core competencies and depth of capabilities in Onshape. Uh, we've been pretty hard at work increasing the range of its overall coverage uh, as it pertains to what you need it to do. Essentially, we are growing the footprint of Onshape, enabling you to tackle a wider range of design problems uh, than ever before. Onshape Frames is a good example of that expansion. So with that, I'm going to pass it over to Josh, who's uh, going to basically uh, discuss uh, where where we go from here. Thanks, Jay. Um, hey, everyone. I, I just see, I'm seeing a couple of uh, things come up on the questions list. Uh, hi, John. Hi, Eduardo. Eduardo, I uh, I have a funny anecdote I'm going to share with the group a little later. Um, so yeah. So the frames overview. So we're gonna we're gonna cover a lot about frames today. Obviously, it's the frames um, the frames webinar. Uh, but we really want to get uh, get you guys started thinking about. Um, what frames is, how you can use it, uh, how it'll change and improve and hopefully improve your workflow. Uh, Jay's going to take you through a couple of really cool demos, and I'm going to uh, dive into some of the key capabilities that uh, that we're pretty excited about with frames. Okay, so <clears throat> first up, we're going to talk about um, frames from the user perspective, right? So there's a there's a lot to talk about with frames, but from the user perspective, it's it's uh, the question is, how can this help me? How can this make me go faster? How can this make me design better? Um, and uh, and so I'm, I want to dive right in. So the the first thing I wanted to clear up was some confusion about uh, uh, frames. Frames is included in the Part Studios toolset for all users uh, at all levels, right? So that's free, um, EDU, Pro, and Enterprise. It's not an extension. It, you 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 actually already have this. If you go to your browser, it's already there. So um, so I just wanted to be clear about that. This is something that everyone can start using right now. Although you should be paying attention to the meeting and not off playing uh, playing with Onshape right at the moment. Um, so so what is Frames? Well. Frames, like most CAD tools, it really the two main goals are help you design something and then help you to fabricate that thing. So it's a set of tools um, to help you quickly and easily design primarily structures that are uh, typically built using um, <clears throat> sections that are of a of a either a single or a small number of standard profiles. So as you can see in the in the uh, picture of the work cell, all of that all of those are 80-20 profiles and then they're um, typically they're cut to length, maybe they have some end uh, trim conditions and then they are joined together either by fasteners or <clears throat> through welding. So that's so we're trying to provide tools to help you quickly design them. And then just as important is we want to help you take those that design and uh, generate the fabrication data that you can um, either put into a drawing or hand off to a fabricator. Um, we call those cut lists, uh, and we'll we'll be going to those in in uh, quite a bit of detail. the The obvious use cases for for frames are the things that you can see on the screen. There are things like space frames and chassis design, um, as uh, 
as you can see in those images. Uh, there's also the work cell design, right? If I have a, if I'm on an assembly line and I have a large work cell where, um, you know, I've got, I've got a, a <clears throat> some, some assembly arm or set of fixtures, you'd want to be able to work in terms of the volume rather than meticulously designing each beam. And then another place where we're seeing a lot of um, uptake of frames in the frame tool set is in furniture design, uh, because again, you can sort of think, well, you have a lot of uh, constant cross sections and you're more interested in the structure rather than, you know, uh, meticulously and in, in de designing each individual beam. So that's kind of at the high level, that's what we're trying to deliver to our users. Okay. So with that, uh, I'm going to now take you on a quick little tour of just the basic workflow uh, of, of frames itself. So here I am in uh, the Onshape environment. I'm going to start with a sketch and I'm going to extrude that into a, I'm going to call it like an envelope because that's essentially what we're doing. So the at its lowest level, uh, frames requires edges, and those edges can be sketch edges, or they can be edges on the the boundary of an envelope, a, a solid or surface model envelope, as I'm doing here. Um, so with that, let's uh, let's begin uh, our frame structure. So start by selecting an 80/20 profile. Uh, we can select from uh, multiple standards themselves. Uh, from within the 8020 series, we can select the type we're going to have. Uh, at the bottom here, I'm going to have a large rectangular um, section. Notice that I can pick the face instead of having to individually select edges. And we're also able to adjust where the frame elements sit regard, uh, relative to the edges that you select. So if I select that bottom center uh, point on the profile, it moves the uh, it moves the frame elements themselves up. I'm also able to override the edges. So, for example, if I want the longest elements to be the two long sides, I can adjust the corners themselves with regards to where the trim is taking place. So, I'm doing a simple butt uh, trim here. Um, so, with that, I've now got a couple of long frame elements and a couple of short ones. So, let's. Uh, Let's add a few more. So up on the top, I only need a channel that has a single slot in it. So let's select the uh, 30, 3001. Again, I'll pick the entire top face. I will rotate 180 degrees so that my slot is facing downwards. We'll change to a butt corner type. I'll adjust just like I did on the bottom so that we're sitting flush with the top. And now we'll go in and apply a couple of corner overrides. So just similar, in a similar fashion to what I did uh, at the bottom, I'm going to do the same thing up the top. So my two longest elements go end to end, and the short ones are trimmed to the interfaces. All right. Well, let's go back for a third pass. This time we want the series of 8020 uh, segments that have slots on all four sides. This gives us flexibility with regards to fastening. I'll set my corner type to butt, and now we'll select the four edges themselves. And I want to trim those faces, uh, the upper and lower faces, to the inside of the upper and lower frame segments. So once that's performed, I'll go and select the last two edges. Missed one. And there we go. So that quickly, I'm able to essentially create an entire frame structure. And obviously, I'll have to go in afterwards and add the fasteners uh, to, to put all this together in an assembly. But you know, the fact is that I was able to, in less than a few minutes, uh, create a pretty sophisticated frame structure based on industry standards. Um, cut list is generated automatically. Let's go over and take a look at it. And you can see that our quantity is absolutely correct. We've got the length, we've got the angles, uh, it's pretty much perfect, ready to populate a bill of materials. It's also tied to the initial uh, structure, whether it be a sketch or a, an envelope the way I used, uh, and that automatically will update when I change the geometry. So with that, 
move on to the next slide. Josh, back to you. Okay, so so uh, <clears throat> Jay took you through a demo, and the the idea was not to to blow your mind with our ability to make cubes. It was just to kind of do a quick dive into um, all the the like little bells and whistles that are available in frames. Um, so now I'm, I want to go through more explicitly um, um, some of the key capabilities and key features of uh, frames that we're quite pleased with. So the first thing I wanted to start with is saying that it is a tool set. Uh, it's, um, it's, it is a collection of tools that are available in the um, under the frames drop down on your toolbar right now, and um, they they all work together to 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 help you build your uh, um, your structures. So the first is is obviously frame creation, which is what uh, uh, Jay demoed, and then there's also um, frame trim, cut list, and tag profile. I'll go into more depth on some of these than others, but uh, but you, but you get it. It's more than just one. It's more than one tool. It's a bunch of tools. Okay, so the next one is um, the profile libraries. Well, not yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, the, the, it's a little. The, the, um, the slides are okay. Yeah, we've been uh, there's some rendering artifacts, but don't worry about that. They obviously they they look great when we're not demoing. <laughs> but um, so let me let me go into the the profile libraries. So um, what Jay showed is that uh, when we sh first shipped frames, we shipped with a, um, we, we looked and saw kind of like what what is a, a, um, a, a broad section of um, frames and profiles across a number of different industries that our users would likely need or benefit from. And we put those together into a library and that's available from day one in our frames profiles. Um, now, if you look at this, if you look at the picture more closely, um, we have the frame profiles, but obviously you can also tab over and use, um, you can get profiles from other documents or even the current document, not the same part studio, but another document. So you can either use the profiles that we've defined or you're free to draw your own if there's something we haven't done. Uh, I'm gonna actually save that for later. There's a lot more to, to discuss there, but I'll leave it to the end. Um, there we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So then, so moving on, there's also the corner types. Um, so when typically when you're building a frame, there's your, you have different types of uh, joint configurations. So for example, in this one, we have circular tubing that is going to be, um, each piece is going to be fish mouthed um, to cut up, uh, to, to uh, slot into the adjoining beam. Um, that's called a coped butt um, trim, where where one is cut to to exactly match the other. Now, another type of uh, corner that we also support is the butt um, joint, which is where one beam just comes and presses up against the other. Um, and then there's the miter joint, which is what you would see in you know picture frame, for example. But we provide a lot of um, different uh, types of corners, and also the overrides in the in the usual like. Um, very simple and elegant and easy to use um, on-screen manipulator, so you can change the direction as needed. Um, and then moving on. Uh, now, now, like I said, it's a tool set, so there's sort of two phases to um, frame design. One is building out the frame, right, where you uh, you have you're working either from a volume or a set of uh, more skeletal drawings, and then you select a bunch of frames. Um, we support a, a, some very basic trimming operations inside the um, inside the frame creation tool, but but we also recognize that um, there are sometimes very complex uh, joints that require a lot more control. And the solution we came up with is um, the frame trim tool. Now the 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 frame trim tool that you see here is um, used when multiple beams are coming together and you want to prioritize them. So that main beam, the one that's hidden uh, to expose the cuts on the other guys, um, that's probably like a main structural beam that you don't want to be tampering with. So you don't want to be cutting into that or anything. The other two, maybe one's one's a, pri a vertical strut and one's the diagonal strut. That, that vertical strut, well, it's got to be coped to fit the main strut 
and and then that that diagonal has to be coped to fit both but in a in a very simple fashion you're able to order and organize the priority of the trims to get exactly um, and, and to edit them to get exactly the geometry that you're looking for um, so the frame trim tool is very powerful um, and and really it's the the second pass of of frame frame creation you create the frames and then you trim them to get exactly what you want now um, the next part of this is obviously cut lists, which is the um, when you when you design a structure, you often want to hand off um, a set of uh, um, the, the the relevant information. Um, you don't necessarily want to make a drawing per, for each um, segment because, uh, for example, in this basic table, four of those beams there's a there's a leg that's been hidden, but four of those beams are the same. So you would rather just tell your fabricator make four of those, right? They're each two foot long. They're they're they have zero degree cuts at the top and the bottom, um, and so the cut list is the way that we aggregate all that information. We tell you um, how many of each geometrically distinct type of beams you a beam you need. Um, and we also, where possible, we compute the length information and the end angle information. Um, some beams are too complex for us to, to calculate or to give you a, a useful number. So in, if you have started playing around with the frames tool set, you might see in Cutlass when you've done something more complex, it'll say not set. And that's because we'd rather uh, just tell you, hey, this is more complex than we can handle and we don't want to give you bad information. So those are cutlets. And then obviously after you've generated all that fabrication information, you want to pull it into a drawing. Um, the drawings, um, so, so first I can say that frames and cutlets are first class citizens in on-shape drawings. They, they, you can pull in the uh, composite part that represents a full, a full frame subassembly. So for example, multiple fr uh, frame segments joined together. And you can also import and edit the cut list table um, as if it were most, most similar to a bill of materials. Now, um, it, we, but to give you maximum flexibility, we it, each of these frame segments is its own part. So if Let's let's say in this um, in this furniture design, the back beam, the long truss, uh, has um, it, maybe it has the company's logo, water jet cut into the back, right? You would probably create a, an individual drawing for that, so that you after maybe before it's welded, uh, you could hand that off to um, to your machinist so that he could do that detail part. So we're trying to give you as much flexibility to to realize your designs as possible. That so we we uh, make it easy to present the aggregate information for the fabricator, but also pull out individual parts for the detail work as needed. But it's really up to you. Um, and those are those are kind of the um, the bullet list of like the main features that are in um, in the frames tool set right now. Hey, Josh. Think now, uh, oh, yes. This is Greg here. I'm just going to jump back in. There's a lot of really interesting questions coming in already, and that's great. Uh, we please do keep the questions coming in. And I think, you know, maybe one or two of them might be appropriate to ask you right here. Um, okay, sure. If you want to extend one of the long members, uh, one of the long members to make it longer, uh, can you do that in the initial design? Would you do that in the initial design or would you move a face? Yeah, that's a great question. And um, I I think maybe, Eduardo, you've already, is this Eduardo, sir? This is Eric. Uh, Eric, okay, so Eric, you probably have already encountered this. Um, in the frames tool set, uh, we actually, when you're designing the frame, you'll and you you go to specify uh, trimming faces. It's actually phrased as limit frames, so um, it's not we we. And trust me, I spent a lot of time wordsmithing this with various people. So we, it was very deliberately chosen as limit. And the reason is, is that under the hood, the frames tool knows to either trim a face back, a, a beam back, um, or extend the beam um, as needed. Um, so, so I wouldn't say it's not the right way to like double the length of a beam, but it can do some extension in order to um, uh, to like get to the next face. There's a there's a great demo that um, uh, that somebody put together for the what's new announcement on the forums um, yeah. where where someone's uh, building up a structure and, and we can probably find a link to that. Uh, but that that's a great example of the extension abilities that are built baked right into frames. I did yeah. I did want to caution you though that um, generally speaking 
um, you you want your frames to match the the skeletal design. So uh, if you need a longer beam, your probably best bet is to extend the sketch that is driving that beam rather than relying on the uh, the extension mechanism. I hope that okay. answers the question. Hey Josh, there was a little extra follow up to that one from Eric as well about if you move the end of one of the two identical members, if you move one end of them, uh, will it see it as different after the move phase and will it update the cut list quantity or length calculation? That's a great question. Uh, <laughs> yes, it should. Um, the 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 aggregation in the cut list. I think Jay used a great word. He called it a roll up, where we where we say these four beams are identical and we put them into the same row of the cut list. That's geometric. So what that means is if you uh, if oh, uh, rather than moving a face, you know, uh, adjusting the gross length dimension of the beam. Let's say you took one beam and punched a hole into it, right? So I've got two beams. They're both one foot long, and I punch a hole into the side of one, um, it can also identify that those are geometrically distinct. That may or may not be what you want in certain cases, but I, but I think generally speaking, what we want to do is uh, dis, uh, make distinct, um, uh, geometrically distinct beams. So yeah, good question. It's not, it's not an attribution thing. It's not about what it was at frame creation time. It's about what is the beam geometrically at cutlass creation time. Okay. So We'll get back to the other questions um, at the end. Um, thank you for bringing them in. Uh, keep sending them in. Um, we will get to them, uh, but I'll just hide away now and let um, Jay and Josh continue. Well, I'm glad you're here, Greg, because I I tried answering while while Josh was uh, going a little earlier. Uh, remember, we had that the, the screw up with the graphic on the slide. That was because I tried answering a question, and as soon as I hit send. It just I, messed I, up. I, so I, I won't be doing that anymore until we're done. Okay. All right. So with that, uh, let's take a look now at a bit deeper dive into uh, the, all the functionality that Josh uh, and, and some of the questions were bringing up. So with that, we're going to take a look at uh, what's traditionally referred to as a space frame. So this is a uh, I believe this was for a, uh, a land speed record uh, vehicle. That's uh, a pretty hefty space frame, uh, also referred to by Ducati as a trellis. Uh, and it starts off in very similar fashion to uh, the basic workflow example I did earlier as a couple of solids. Uh, as you can see, there are sketches on the sides of the solids and everything is, in this example, everything is variable driven. So for example, I can set the roll the roll bar angle uh, to zero, whatever I set it to in the variable table, uh, it will update my model. And you're going to see downstream how powerful that combination of tools it actually is. So I've got some tube elements already defined. Uh, let's go in and create some more uh, frame segments. So we'll go to ANSI round tube, I'm gonna select the size that we want. And now we're going to select the two frame elements where we want it to sit with regards to and with regards to the overall arrangement. Now, similar to what I was able to do before in the previous example, I can select any of these nine points to align my tube segment with the actual sketch itself. Um, also, similar to what we did before, but instead of trimming the faces, this time we're going to trim to parts. So we're going to select the four main four and a half tubes to trim these new uh, these new frame segments to. And that, that would be a coped butt uh, trim right there. So let's continue. So I'm gonna select, the, gonna select this piece. Now this is gonna be unique. So you'll notice I'm not gonna do side to side uh, in a single shot. We are, however, going to do a fairly complex trim operation based on uh, order, of, uh, order of hierarchy with regards to how this piece is trimmed relative to all of the others. So if we temporarily hide the longitudinal uh, space frame elements, we can play around with the, uh, the trimming, uh, the corner type trimming on this, the forward section. All right, so let's take a look at some of these corner overrides. Uh, with a miter cut, obviously we're going to have, well, it's not gonna be a 45 degree angle, but you have an angled cut where the tube ends meet. We're also able to uh, select the corner entity itself and change which piece takes precedence with regards to the trim, uh, which piece is coped to, to the other. 
So we've now got a couple of uh, changes that we need to uh, adjust for. We're gonna take that back to where it was and we're going to trim these forward frame segments to the longitudinal segments themselves. And this is where we're gonna use that ordered group tool that I was talking about. So we're gonna select the four longitudinal frame elements and now we're gonna select everything else that is going to be trimmed to those elements. So those sit higher up, those are, those are basically the requirements for those need to be stiffer than the requirements for the, that front, the blue section that we were uh, just working on a few minutes ago. So those tubes will remain solid. The other tubes uh, for the front segment, those will be trimmed to the longitudinal segments themselves. Now, at this point, uh, I just kind of skipped ahead a little bit, and you'll notice that we've already got the roll bar, uh, the roll bar section created. Now, we can go back into our variables. As I pointed out before, uh, the entire thing here is variable driven. So at any point, we can easily and quickly go in and adjust the overall dimensions and overall size uh, of our frame structure. So modify the roll, back, the roll bar angle itself, make that a little less steep. Uh, and all of the components for the, the roll cage area uh, are adjusted based on that change to the variables. So you'll see we have a couple of cut lists already in existence, cut list one and two. I'm gonna name this, this is gonna be our third cut list and we're gonna make this specific to the rollover structure itself. So you see we got cut list one and two, and now we have cut list rollover. So we'll scroll down, and these are all of the elements that go into making up that rollover structure. And you'll notice that cross-highlighting is enabled, as Josh pointed out, these are first-class citizens in the on-shape environment. Uh, we have all of the tube lengths, we've got our roll-up as indicated, and so all of that is basically done automatically uh, with the frames uh, tool set. Now, we're also able to, in one fell swoop, because the uh, cut list creates these composites, I can, like I just pointed out, in one fell swoop, I can set the material type for the entire, uh, for that entire rollover structure or any of these, uh, the chassis or roll cage uh, that were created using uh, the, the cut list. Uh, again, as Josh pointed out, first class citizen, so it's very, very quick and easy to create uh, documentation of these designs because the uh, because it's a composite, I don't have to set, do any special work with assemblies uh, to create that. The cut list item, the, the cut list entity, uh, the, that structure, that composite can quickly and easily be uh, detailed here in, in documentation. And again, uh, because everything is in a very similar format to a bill of materials, the, uh, the cut list has all of the item numbers, uh, which are contained uh, basically built from the cut list itself. I'm also able to uh, add a note based on existing uh, mass properties. So this was just the mass properties that were calculated over in the design environment itself. As far as putting together actual assemblies is concerned, it's very quick and easy to grab those composite structures that are created when we use the cut list command and create our assembly from that. So pretty powerful set of tools here in our front to back demonstration of, uh, of frames. So with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Josh. Okay, thanks for that, Jay. Um, I think uh, I love that demo because you can you really see the full the full feature set in action. Um, I really I what really amazed me was when I first started using it, I didn't comprehend the uh, I didn't comprehend how clever it was doing the composites when we used the cut list. It wasn't until I start when I started doing the other the adjacent things like drawings and build material. I was like, oh my god, that's like that's all set. I don't have to, like normally when I put an assembly together or something like that, you'd have to pull in each of the frame elements. Then you'd have to like group them together so that they wouldn't move around. Um, you know, you'd still use that design in place uh, protocol 
uh, in your part studio, but then, you know, basically putting it together in an assembly was kind of a chore. Um, so this, I mean, it basically automates that entire process. So it's, it's really elegantly done in my opinion. Yeah, I, I would agree. I think it, uh, it treats the pieces as separate when it's useful and then it treats them as an aggregate when it's useful. So okay. it's, it's kind of like, it works the way you want it to work, which which I think is kind of a uh, an example of on shape in general. Um, in fact, I'll you know just for my own my own journey as I was a longtime mechanical engineer, and then um, in 2015 I discovered on shape, and I was like, ah, this is a the first CAD package that works the way I think, <laughs> and and so I I switched and never went back, and I think Frames is a great example of that. Um, so, um, so we've talked a lot about uh, the specifics of of frames, like what, uh, how you might use it in your workflow, what it can do, uh, some of the some of the specific features. Um, but I also think it's um, when I was when I was getting ready for this webinar, I I got to thinking about what frames tells about Onshape as a whole, uh, and I thought that uh, we could take a moment to to kind of to kind of expand on that idea. So. My, my core thesis here is that the, the Onshape technology platform allows us to address user need faster and better. So that's, that's kind of like, if you remember one thing, that's what I believe. Um, and, and I think that Frames really helps, uh, helps us to understand that, helps to see that. So I wanted to dive a little bit into uh, the, uh, the technology behind uh, Frames to, to, to expand on that notion. So the first thing that I wanted to to, um, to discuss was that the Frames toolset is 100% feature script. Um, this is the the same language that we give to our customers, and and the reason I think it's worth discussing and harping on really is that um, it's I think if you're a if you're a customer, you might be thinking, oh well, you know, feature script is kind of good for like little bits and pieces, but you know, if I need to, really, if you need to do some heavy lifting, you probably have to have access to like the, the I don't know, the feature script superset or the C++ um, itself um, and, and all that. And, and I think Frames is really an example where, no, you don't. This is, uh, you know, this is many, many thousand lines of code um, and it's doing something very sophisticated, uh, but it's all 100% feature script, which means that a sufficiently motivated customer could have written this for themselves. Um, and so I, so I think that that really speaks to the power, capability, and flexibility um, of of the Onshape technology. Um, and um, uh, and uh, so that so that's the first the first part of this. Then the second part is um, the the requires us to dig a little bit into the history of frames um, and the the first iteration of frames was neil cook's beams feature which you uh, it, it sounds like from the from the question list uh, many of you are are using or at least familiar with so so why what does that tell us about um, the onshape technology platform well i think it it goes back to my original statement of um, how we were able to address user need faster and better so so Neil Cook, he's the, the director of technical services, a uh, real sharp guy, um, he, but he works very closely with customers, whereas I'm sort of removed, you know, they keep me in, they keep me in my basement, apparently. Um, and he was able to identify a user need early on and immediately write a custom feature that got people rolling, right? That's what Beams was. And, and uh, so that's like the, the first part of that, that um, uh, PowerPoint circle that I spent ages laboring on. Um, and so he was able to get a custom feature out to the customers uh, right away. And that thing went through tons of iterations, right? He was getting feedback from the community. He was improving it as things occurred to him. We were figuring out what worked, what didn't work, what uh, needed to work better. All of that experience um, was baked into the development of frames. And so that when we went to deliver our frames as part of our core tool set and and you know give it give it its own fancy button on the toolbar it actually had like years and years of of development miles on it and so i think we were we we're able to get to something that people need and want and and are delighted by um uh the, with because of our because of the nature of our technology i don't i don't see how other folks could do the same um and then 
the uh, so 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 the last part about this graphic on the left that I want to I want to go into is that it really is a closed loop, um, and and why that's relevant here is that you know Onshape prides itself on being an agile and customer focused company. We were able to go from user need to a custom feature, do a lot of development, and bring something into the core tool set that I think we're, we're pretty pleased with, um, and put it back out there to address user need. But <laughs> um, and we're absolutely hard at work extending the frames tool set. I have I have three monitors at my computer, and one of them is for the webinar, and two of them are for frames. So I'm I'm actively developing it right now. Um, but the other hilarious thing that happened was that as soon as I, as soon as we shipped this about, I think six weeks ago now, um, I saw a message pop up on the forums. I think it's from from Eduardo uh, Magdalena, who's joining us in the chat. He's um, he was um, uh, he needed to customize it to to better suit his needs. And after I got over my initial shock, <laughs> um, I was I was so gratified and delighted because. You know, can you can you imagine that pace of development and how how pleasing it is to see people? We we make a tool based a lot on their input, and then they take it and run with it, and then we can take that what they've made and either you know use the concepts or even use the code and and pull it back into our design. And um, and I I just I I think that's like just a wonderful aspect of um, on shape, and I don't see any. I mean, I don't really know that many tech companies that are able to do that, to deliver the product in such a way that that the users are given full reign to to develop and extend it. Um, so I so I really think Frames kind of cap is a it tells a beautiful story about what the on shape technology can really deliver to customers. And I wanted to I wanted to just leave you with that note, that idea that Frames captures some of the great things about on shape, um, as well as you know absolutely allowing you guys to make frames, which is really what it's supposed to do. Um, so, so then, next slide. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so <clears throat> the other thing um, is there. I'm, and I've also seen some messages, um, some questions about this. I, I did want to mention that uh, we're we're absolutely hard at work on extending the feature set. Um, as I said earlier, Onshape prides itself on being an agile company, so we want to get products out that are or features out that are ready to go and ready for production um, uh, uh, mechanical design. But we don't need necessarily to wait until everything is completely baked. So <clears throat> we decided that gussets and end caps, uh, which are um, uh, you know, very commonly used in frame design that we needed to put, we needed to keep those in the oven a little bit longer. So that's that's really what I'm working on right now. Um, and, but those are absolutely in the pipeline. Those are coming. We know you want them. We want to give them to you um, and they're absolutely in development. A few other bits and pieces I wanted to mention were that the frame um, segment union operation, which I know some of the some of our users have reached out to, to us about. So um, really, like all of our tools, they're to help you do your job better. And generally speaking, your job is making physical things. So we want to make it possible to fabricate things. Uh, one of the in frames, you might see. So, for example, we'll use the we'll use this chassis um, image on the side there of that slide. You'll see that those the top of that roll cage, right? That's made up of uh, multiple different sweeps that are um, each one is considered a separate frame segment in our in our tool set. But um, but we got some early feedback that actually uh, the way of uh, the way a fabricator is going to get that is he's going to start with a straight beam and put it on a, a bending jig and and bend that out of a single piece. So we want to we we think that that's going to be how people want to use this. So we're we're rolling that into our um, into our technology right now as well. So that will that will be rolling out uh, well as soon as I finish writing it and getting it through code review. <laughs> so, um, so it's so that is also inbound. Then obviously there are trim improvements. I think um, there's a lot of uh, sophistication around trim and the, and it's going to be getting more. Um, the last one um, uh, that I that I wanted to leave you with is something that I I personally think is uh, really exciting, and this goes back to Eric Pesty's question about the plan to add lumber back. So, so when we started on the uh, frames core tool set, um, we identified the need for a profile library, right? But when you start looking into it, you, you're, we're, we look across industries. We look at all the different ways people are going to use, all the different standards people are going to use, and it, it just became a um, Herculean task 
So what we decided was we were going to get out with a, a set of profiles that people can use right away, you know, the, the most common ones. But we also identified that, that um, companies will want and users will want to develop their own library, their own collection of frame profiles. I'll give you an example. Um, you, if you're... Um, you, if you're working in HVAC, um, your you, your company probably has a standard set of profiles that you use, right? You've got the, the big guy, the medium guy, and a couple of small ones, whatever. Um, and so you might, instead of using our profile library and uh, um, or just using custom drawings, we want to be uh, to let you bundle those together into your own library. Now, um, but we also want to make it really beautiful and easy to use, um, and so that. What we're working on is the tools that allow uh, users to author and administer uh, those profiles. So that that was a very long way of answering the the question about a plan to add lumberback. What we're going to play, what we're going to add is the ability for people to come up and define their own standards that are appropriate for their use cases and their company, uh, their companies. And um, so that's that's actually quite involved. That's going to take a little bit longer, uh, but uh, but it is coming, and we're excited to, to deliver that. Um, and I think with that we've come to the end of yeah. come to the end of what I have to say. So I'll hand it off to Jay. That was that was excellent, Josh. Um, as I explained earlier, uh, Unshaped Frames represents another example of the expansion of our core competencies. Um, it's a broadening of our overall footprint as it pertains to your day-to-day -day design requirements. Um, we, we feel pretty strongly that Unshaped Frames raises the bar with regards to uh, your productivity uh, when creating structures such as these, uh, which have been shown and discussed uh, during the, the webinar today. Um, we look forward to seeing what you are able to do with it and can't wait to hear back from you as you put it through its paces. Uh, so by all means, I'm looking forward to like seeing content uh, based on frames on the uh, on the forums. Uh, at this point, on behalf of Greg, Josh, and I, 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 I want to thank you for your uh, for your time as we really appreciate it. We know you're busy. Um, we uh, we hope you enjoyed and what you saw, and we hope it was helpful. Uh, with that, um, I guess we can take we got time for some Q and A, and I'll turn it back over to Greg if he wants to close us out. Oh, absolutely. There's, there's, a, there's a bunch of questions, um, and we do want to get to them. Um, I'll just throw them randomly at you guys. Josh and Jay, be ready. Sure. So somebody asked, I'm new to Unshape. Is Frames available for free or only subscription? That's available to everybody. Uh, pretty much, I, I'm pretty sure, Josh, right? I mean, EDU, it's, it's part of or Unshape. Yeah, I, right. I actually love this question because it, it's like, yeah, it's for everybody. That's how that's how we do things. <laughs> you, right. you already have it in your browser. You go go and play with it. I'm uh, we're very pleased with it. So yep, it's for everyone. Okay, then we jump around a little bit here, and maybe Josh, uh, this one triggers off one of your comments on profiles and, and standards and custom profiles and things. That, that, and what I was asking about. Simplified profiles, maybe um, specific to the 8020. You know, the, the 8020 profile library we've got is fully detailed, and maybe there might need to be a simplified one. You know, without the rounds. But yeah, that's not a bad idea. Um, because some like with with the more complex geometry, some of the trims start to take a long time. The the uh, face reattribution, um, that that's stuff that's happening under the hood that that can be expensive. Um, yep. I there I don't think there was anything on the table, but I think it's a really good idea, and I would love for that to be filed as a uh, improvement request. Um, so so if you can go into Onshape, you know, hit the, click that button and post that. Um, as I said, like every single feature request related to frames hits my desk. So if you post that, I'm going to read that and I will um and I'll I'll share it around with with uh with the folks. Like we're a pretty small team so we so there's limits on our bandwidth. Um and so it might be something that you have to do once um once profile library authoring becomes available, but I think the question has merit and um it should be posed to the product team. So please do file that that uh, improvement request. I think that's a great idea. I I think I got another one for you then. Um Somebody asked where two frame segments meet, can we have an offset to allow space for welding? Um, 
Yep, that's also another issue already logged in Jira. I think it's a very good idea, but um, the the best way to, to get that moving is to um, uh, get yourself added to the improvement request because, I mean, I wish it, it's it's not always great that it's this way, but the squeaky wheel uh, gets the oil. So if you if you go in, if that's something you need, please let our um, support folks know and the, it'll get propagated up to me and then that helps uh, prioritize it in planning. All right, here's another one. Um, I'm not another request, but how do this new tool set, how does this new tool set um, relate to the previous beams? I think uh, the custom feature, and I know you went into that, but maybe just comment on perhaps compatibility, pros and cons, that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's a great question. And I, um, it's it, obviously, if you're familiar with the beams tool, you can see how much of that DNA showed up in frames. But um, while working on beams, like like I said, uh, we, we figured a lot of stuff out about how to make frames um, really work in, in more cases, how to make cutlass work in more cases. So the, the, the downside of adding all of that power to the frames core tool set is that we don't have backwards compatibility to, to beams. Now, that's not to say that beams can't be used, can't be added to cutlass, right? You can you can add any part to a cutlass. It's uh, in terms of the cutlass, it just comes up as its own row. Um, but it won't have the face attribution information, uh, which is added during frame creation operations. That um, that is how we compute the length and the end cap angles. So um, so it's it's just not something. We realized there were too many changes under the hood to be able to get that backwards compatibility. And I know that's going to leave some folks in the lurch, but I'm hoping that you'll see the value add of the frame core, uh, the frame tool set is enough to get you to switch over. Hope right. that answers the question. I think it does, yeah. Uh, another question here from a different Eric. There's a few different Eric's on the call today. Hi, Eric's. Um, for sections with bends in them, it uh, looks like you created separate segments for straight and curved sections is that correct yes and this is a perfect example of approaching the problem as a computer scientist and not as a mechanical engineer because to me you know and i i back in back in my my youth which is has long departed um i was a mechanical engineer and i approached everything as a mechanical engineer but as a computer scientist uh each of these is a separate frame segment with a se separate driving edge. And so I, well, I was like, well, of course, it's going to be a separate beam segment or frame segment. Uh, but as I mentioned in the what's next, you're right. For, for a mechanical designer, these separate sections should be treated as a um, uh, the way that they're going to be fabricated, which is if you have a straight and then a bend and then another straight and they're all G1 continuous you should have the ability to add those together and we're going to bake that right into the frames tool because that's yeah i think that's how people are going to want to use it so it's coming it's not ready today but like i said I, I, if i could show you my desktop you would <laughs> you would see multiple other screens where i am actually trying to build that in right now so it's on its way all right another one are there any plans to add the attributes information to the beam feature uh, frame feature i guess uh, so customers could update their features and create a cut list. Um, well, you know, that's just sort of the, the comment about backward compatibility or how far back we go. Um, yeah. Right. I, I yeah, that one's, asking, yeah. That, that sounds like a Josh question. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I um, I was um, uh, taking a moment to, to think of it. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I'm sorry that, that we can't, that it's we can't do that. Um, the the frame attribution really is some of the the hardest stuff that happens in frames. It's quite hard to make it work in all cases, and we we're able to do it because we have a lot of assumptions about how the frames are being created. Um, I can't really. I I mean I'm, I suppose I could, but I I looked at this and I was like, oh, I don't think I can do this. Um, but you know, there's a lot of smart people in this on this call. Maybe somebody can figure this out for me. Um, I, uh, I didn't see how to get that information back onto the beams. So, so the two part answer is yes, you can add a beam to a cut list, but no, it won't have the attribution um, so that it won't have the length and angle information. And that's, that's kind of the compromise we ended up on. 
Right. So there's a, quest, uh, a couple of questions on the AISC standard, and I know that there's a and the question pertains to you know some differences between the current standard and the previous standard on the uh, the wall thickness um, nominal wall thicknesses. And I think the best answer uh, or the the correct answer here is to follow up with that support ticket that you have, um, and you'll get an update from uh, you know support through there. Uh, that's you know the latest information will will have to be come coming that way. Um, all right. Another. Yeah, I wanted to. I just wanted to expand on that. That 93% of nominal. Um, that was not an error. That's actually. Um, uh, it's it's a, it's essentially a version change of the AI uh, SC standards. So um, we are. Um, so there there are folks for whom that is actually the correct standard. Um, we are in the process of fixing that. Uh, Jason, the guy I know, the guy on the support ticket um, is is hard at work at, on that right now. So so yes, it's coming. Uh, no, it's not ready to go just yet. Okay, one of the Eric's is asking around part numbers. So I think members should have part number capability because oh segments, I guess should have part number capabilities because often a member a segment will have holes and need a drawing. So therefore, a part number to send to machining. Um, Sounds like a good practical case there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The 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 parts the, the frame segments are for all intents and purposes just a first class part in a part studio. So you should be able to add a, a, a specify a part number. Now, do we we don't have the ability? We we haven't added the ability to automatically generate and attribute those um, frame segments. If if that's the request, please file that with support. That that um, that. That might have some merit and be worth discussing. But right now, you should be able to go in and, and add part numbers, same as same yes. as a regular part. Yeah, I believe that was the intent of the question. I'm trying to read between the lines here. But uh, yeah. right, does anybody else have any final questions? I think we've reached the list of ones that I've seen coming in. Um, probably, probably with that though. Um, on behalf of myself again and, and Jay and Josh, thank you for joining us today. Um, yeah, we look forward to seeing what you do with this new capability. Thanks very much. Thanks everyone. I'm I'm signing off now. Bye bye. See you guys.